Assalamu alaikum everyone. Good morning. So we are gradually approaching the eight. Well, Khalil, uh, my son Khalil will be eight tomorrow. I don't know. I uh, <laughs> I feel like I have quite a mixed feelings, like you know. But anyway, this video is just uh, mainly to reflect on the past year and to talk about some of the the changes and the improvements i know i had been talking a lot about you know challenges and whatnot but there are so much uh there have been so much improvements in the past year alhamdulillah uh, i i we give all thanks uh, to allah uh to god almighty because i don't think any of this would have been possible without the help of allah and as we are in the month of ramadan i want to reflect to you know um and to appreciate to be grateful entirely for the loads of things that we achieved between the seventh and the eighth year so uh, uh i would say uh before seven we had you know we've been struggling with a lot of him having he had quite a lot of words but he was not able to use them properly he wasn't able to use them correctly he didn't know how to use it basically but i noticed that slowly as we gradually approached uh his eighth birthday i started to notice that he was using his words really well so we've been getting more words uh, usage of words which is great compared to where we are coming from from we started from no pointing um no words you know it's been quite a, a journey and so right now we are at the point whereby you know he's making uh trying to put like two sentences together sometimes three depending on what he wants and so i i see all of these like every single progress every one of them little there are no little gains i always say that there are no little wins or progress every progress is progress and so i also noticed that lately he's been a little bit more He's been not a little bit, he's been more aware. He's been showing more awareness like about, uh, about the things around him, the surroundings, his siblings. He knows that he's in second grade, which was uh, quite a discovery, you know. Uh, it happened through one of our, uh, while I was, I, I realized this, I noticed this when we were going through one of our challenging behaviors. If you've been following my videos, you know, uh, we were going back and forth and I realized that he, you know, he actually knows that he's in second grade. Like, we don't even know if he knows, you know, what class he is or what grade he is. You know, he's just going to school, but he knows that he's in second grade because he's been really attached to the number two these days. And he wants to work with the books, his manuals and textbooks, that are, uh, second grade textbooks. And also, that is also a sign of awareness. Another thing I noticed that he's been, uh, you know, um, paying attention lately he will pay attention to the things that i do with his siblings and the things that i do with him he has been imitating my my little daughter his sister in some areas of you know emotional and uh and dealing with emotions and stuff which is a good thing in some way so like um sometimes because she likes she's she has always been that independent child ever since she was like she turned one she's always independent like she doesn't want anyone to do anything for her and I think this kind of nurtured uh, um, Khalil to, uh, to you know, he what he observes what she does. And now he's so obsessed with, like, you know, trying to do things on his own. He doesn't want me to do anything for him. He doesn't want you to touch the light in his bathroom. He doesn't want you to put up the toilet seat for him. He doesn't want you to do anything. So once he doesn't want, like, he, he now understands boundary. He understands, you know, that his space... He understands that these are my things so especially he's very very um um how do i even say he, he can relate to when you write something when you write his name on something he understands that these are mine and it took us a really long process it took us a while i had to talk to him i had to make him understand that you know and uh, this was a point where i was dealing with those challenging behaviors and i had to you know have conversations with him to let him understand that he can only touch the things that are his and that has his names on it and he can't pick other th people's books and suddenly he turned around and now he's so respectful like he he's always with his books 
And when you ask him, is this your book? You know, he opens it and shows you his name. He shows you that this is mine. It has my name on it. So this is good. This is really good. He understands that, uh, you know, his space, his things. He doesn't like people messing with his things. Don't touch his things. Uh, a lot of autistic kids are like that. And I see him going into that, you know, don't mess with my things. Don't touch my things. He's really, really, um, uh, how do I even say um, protective of his space and his things, you know, he doesn't want anyone around him. So I need, and I see that as a sign of growth, maturity, uh, as so many things, you know, understand more comprehension. And I also noticed that he, he compares some things that I do with his sister. So like when I serve them meals, he now, or I put snacks in their snack box, he goes in and check what I put in his sister's snack box and compares it with what he has in his snack box. You know, there's just so much, but these are just some of the few things that we have achieved this year. Um, I talked about, um, you know, more word, uh, more use word, uh, usage of words. We have sentence. We have like uh, our communication, alhamdulillah, I think communication has really, really improved within the last year. And so our meltdowns have also come out somehow subsided. I know I used to talk about this a lot, like we have a lot of meltdowns and tantrums, but it has really come down because I'm able to understand, I have been able to understand some of things and, you know, I know how to avoid certain things and also have, you know, these conversations over and over again. I have been very strict with some of the rules that I lay down. So he's getting to understand that these certain things, no matter how much I cry, no matter how much I throw a tantrum, I don't get it because these are the rules. So I feel like a lot of things are working in, in my favor. Like if he knows that something, he's not supposed to have it, he will ask me for that thing. He will ask me and then before I answer, he will say, <laughs> he will respond and say, no, you can't know. He will say, he will just say negatively, like, because he knows that that is what I'm going to say because he knows he's not supposed to have that. So I think all of these are quite, um, I don't know. I, I have been really excited. I've been really happy for this past few days. There's been quite a lot. Um, one of the, the most, uh, celebrated thing I think for me is this emotional regulation. So we are now at this point whereby when he throws the, you know, the tantrums and he's crying and he's screaming and everything, I always remain calm. I always remain calm. His sister, it, it, it drives her nuts a lot of time, but I try to also make her not to yell and scream at him and to remain calm. And I realized that this has been working really well for us. So when we, when I stay calm, I, you know, I try to call, uh, I try to calm him as much as possible, but if he still wants to cry, I let him cry. It's okay to cry. I let him cry. But then I realized that when he cries to a certain level, he cries to a certain point that he feels like, okay, mommy has tried to, uh, to pacify me and I'm still crying and she's not pacifying me anymore. He just comes to me and gives me a hug. It's like the sweetest. I wish I could, I, I never get to make videos of such um, periods because, you know, it just happens randomly. So it's not like, uh, you know, there's, uh, it's not like I planned it or it happens anyway, but I hope I will get that on camera one day. And he will come to me, he will hug me and say, it's okay, mommy. It's okay, mommy. And when he says that, it's not like he's trying to, it's, yeah, he's also trying to tell me it's okay, mommy, but he wants me to tell him it's okay and to, to pacify him one last time, to hug him, to, you know, to, you know how kids behave. I, I, my, my daughter had that when, when she was like, she did that a lot when she was around four, three, four, she will cry a lot. I think neurotypical kids do that today. She will cry a lot. And if you don't tell her it's okay, she will never stop crying until you tell her it's okay. We had that phase with my with my first daughter. Yeah, I remember it was uh, three years there about. Yeah, I, I believe so. And it just kind of brought back that memory because uh, imagine she went through that stage at three and now Khalil is doing his at eight. Can you see the difference? Like, is there so much difference? Like five, um, four, um, yeah? How many years? My <laughs> Four years, five years gap just to compare the level of understanding that he is at this moment at eight years old but all in everything i i, I say it is a great one uh, you know so uh, as i was saying he comes to me he hugs me he says it's okay mommy it's okay mommy when he says that i hug him back and i say it's okay 
one thing I noticed is that if I don't say it genuinely, like maybe I'm busy and I'm just trying to tell him, okay, it's okay just to get him off me. He will never go. He will never get away from me. He will stay until he gets that genuine, it's okay, Khalil, it's okay, it's okay, don't cry. You know, he wants to hear me say it from my heart. I don't know how he does that, but he just never gets off my back. So I always have to find, you know, uh, you know, get, get myself together and calm him in a way that I, it shows that I mean it. And I, and I, you know, I really mean it from the bottom of my heart. And I try to say more when I, when I pacify him. And then once I do that, he will just stop crying immediately. And he will just be so happy playing around the house. He will be the most calm and the most gentle person in the house. And honestly, for me, this has been the, one of the greatest achievements for this, um, for this year. Um, so, um, tomorrow it's going to be a quite, a, a, a rough, uh, a busy day. I, Initially, didn't want to, you know, do anything. Maybe we just have a small, uh, you know, just within the family. But then I thought that because he's also in his level of uh, understanding, and like I said, he's becoming more aware. He's comparing things, and I want to be safe with this eighth um, birthday because he must have noticed, you know, I celebrated his sister's birthday, and then you know we made the cake and everything. So. I didn't want to leave him out. I want him to feel included, to feel loved. And this will be the first time I think I will be having organizing something for him, even though it's just a form of like a play date. And the reason behind the play date is because it's also, I want to introduce him to the concept of friendship and understanding his friends and who his friends are. So I selected certain members of his classmates that I know that he likes because he, he is very attached to them. He likes to play with them. And even though he doesn't understand that they are his friends yet, but I want us to start working on that once he turns eight so he can identify who are his friends and, you know, and we can talk more about how friendship works. So this is why I decided to organize a small play date. So we'll be having a play date tomorrow with few fr friends from his classmates. And we will, it will just be basically in the morning because it's uh, Ramadan. So it will just be in the morning, two hours, two, three hours. They're going to play and there will be cake and they will just sing happy birthday for him. And, you know, he will just really feel included. I also want to see how much you know, he understands, you know, um, that the, the whole birthday concept because uh, the previous years we've been celebrating his birthday, he just looks at us like, what are you guys doing? You know, like he's not there, like he's not interested. Last year, he was running away from his cake <laughs> and he was just like, you know, just uh, let me be. He didn't want to have anything to do, it, but we did. We made it fun anyway. So I'm looking forward to this um, eighth year. I say Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. I I can't say I can't thank Allah enough for where we, uh, how far we have come, from you know pre-verbal, from um, so many so many challenges. Um, you know from yeah, and I, I forgot to mention also his more his fine motor skills has been you know really really impressive these days. His fine motor skills have been uh, his writing has been uh, improving. I've been getting a lot of good feedbacks from school. Also, he's been attentive in school. He sits down in class. He behaves. Um, it's 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 really soothing and um, calming to know that things continue to get better. And I look forward to things getting even better, inshallah. As uh, from from eight upwards. I follow a lot of parents that have elder kids, you know, and I always look forward to seeing those transition you know the changes you know when they share stories about their children i know all our children are different but you know uh there are certain things that we will also possibly we will also definitely get there um inshallah god's willingly so i look forward to this eight year with um continued determination dedication as i have done in the past as i will continue to do for my son um with uh, hope patience and um, believe that it will definitely surely get better and will continue to to get better and remain permanent inshallah so let me know what you what you think about our journey uh, uh so far about the the areas of achievement that i have shared 
um, within this last year for my son. If you have a child below, um, you know, the ages of, you know, seven and below, and you, 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 you don't need to feel like your, your, your child is not doing okay. Trust me, every one of our children, they are unique. They are different. Every one of them, uh, them will thrive. They will do whatever they, uh, they, they are able to do at their own time, at their own capacity. So don't feel bad um, hearing or someone else, you know, talk about what his or her child is doing at a certain moment. Remember that there are all our children are different and, you know, everything will get there at the right time. Always remember that. So let me know what you think about the things that we achieved. Let me know if you have uh, a child on the autism spectrum and then what you hope to achieve in the next year for your child. If you have a child that, you know, um, that is, you know, moving from one age to another, what are yeah, your expectations? Generally, just give me a feedback and let me know. You drop your comments in the uh, comment section and I will be reading and responding. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Bye.